is going to be here in a bit. She had a prior arrangement at the court. Thank you. Are you sure you don't need any coffee? I'm very sure. Thank you. I can speak for myself, so in case I need anything. God, Elsie, have you just become partner without telling me? I had to wait for two freaking hours to see you. Monica, it's you. <gasps> Who else? Oh, how long has it been? <gasps> here, like... oh, wait, oh, many. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. Wow. Look at you. You are looking absolutely gorgeous. Oh. And you haven't changed a bit. Legend gracefully, I see. You and your jokes about age. <laughs> I may be older than you, but I know I look just as good. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you changed on Amira lately? Stop it! <laughs> you haven't changed, have you? Oh, you... Mm, you have this glow on your skin. Oh, please, the browsing makeup. It's Timothy, isn't it? Come on, tell me. It's Timothy, right? Elsie, please. Oh, come on, stop that. It's not every day my friends get married. I wish I could meet a man like Tim. You have a good man who wants to make an honest woman out of you, and all you can tell me is, Elsie, please? And what are you talking about? Hmm. Oh, was it meant to be a secret? Okay, Timothy called me this morning. He's coming in to see me this afternoon. He didn't mention much on the phone, but he said it's got something to do with you and his divorce case. <laughs> it sounds like you're about to become Mrs. Timothy Letu. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Elsie. I can't wait for the wedding. Please, just stop it. What is it? Can we talk? Timothy wants to leave me. All, for all, all the years that I gave him, he wants to leave me. I don't understand. Apparently he had feelings for his ex-wife. They have been sleeping together. I am so lucky I found out I don't know what to do. I am so, so sorry. You mentioned he wants to see you. Yeah. Actually, he called Joe, who then asked him to call me. What did he want? I don't know. Come on, Elsie, we're like sisters. Yeah, but he's a client. Joe's client. Which still makes him a client of this firm. Elsie! You know what, I've already said too much. And I have a feeling you didn't come here to make a social call. All right, I knew he's a client of the firm. And that sooner or later you're going to hear about this. You're suing him? Yes, yes, of course. For the last four years I've built my life, my career, my future around him. And the goddamn fool he is, he gets back with his ex-wife. Because that is what she is. I wasted my four good years, Elsie. Four goddamn... Ah! I don't know what to say. I'm even telling you all this. Chances are you going to defend him. You're telling me this because I'm your friend. Will you defend him? He's a client of this firm. Elsie, please don't. Promise me one thing, that you're not going to take this case. For heaven's sake, the four years I spent with Timothy, I've got to count. There's a high probability that I won't. He called you. Joe asked him to call me. That is my answer. Monica, wait! See you on the other side, Elsie. I'm here to see Elsie. Monica, please, just... Timothy. Hi, Elsie. Monica, how are you doing? We hope you've moved out all your stuff. That was a little awkward. That's an understatement. After filing the documents, we should have the demand letter ready in less than 72 hours. 72 hours? 
I was looking at a shorter time, say 48 hours. Uh, but that would be pushing it. Then push it. Do you know colleagues would be joining us? I just need to do a quick consult with him for a few minutes. Sure. Can I borrow him? Sure. Two minutes. That would be more than sufficient. Thank you. This had better be good. What's going on? Timothy Leto. What about him? You handed him over to me. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention it to you, but I've been calling you so that I can give you a heads up, but you're not answering your call. He's got a domestic issue and it's something like that. Did you handle his divorce case? Okay, it was not finalized and it was had to be put on hold. I can't do it. Why? Because the girl you just dumped is a very good friend. Monica is your friend? But anyway, I can't do it. Why not? I'll be in Eldoret for a murder case and I'll be back here on the date of the trial. Good, then you can do it when you get back. Listen, he's at reception right now. I'll ask him to wait until you finish up in here. Elsie. Joe, the plaintiff is my friend. I won't have enough time to prepare for this case. Listen, if it's too hot to handle for you, hand it over back to Mr. Mwako. Besides, there's one who asked me to pass it on to you. Something tells me that this conversation will not end well. And how else is it supposed to end? <sighs> Need I remind you that you stole my husband from me? Excuse me? Your husband left you for me centuries ago. Well before your trouble ever began. You know, your marriage is doomed to end the moment you put your signature on that little piece of paper called a marriage certificate. Point of correction. It was doomed the moment you set your eyes on his wallet. Now, I am merely taking back what is rightfully mine. You have a big fight in your hands, woman. Bring it on! I am and will still be Mrs. Timothy Leto. Good luck in the trial. You underestimate me, Mrs. Timothy Leto. <laughs> Oh, we'll see who'll have the last laugh. That is the last laugh, Monica. It's over for you, sweet cakes. Oh. And by the way, thank you for taking such good care of my husband. He suddenly has this renewed, robust youthfulness that I have immensely and intensely enjoyed this last couple of months. I'm hoping for some more. Too bad to be around to experience this newly found energy. Enough of this. Monica, stop. And you stay out of this. Just stop. Sure. Off you go. Emily, that wasn't necessary. For four years, I have spent every single day and night in anguish because of that bitch. Oh yes, it was necessary. And I've barely even begun. Did I miss something? No. Monica, is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. I just wanted to. Mm. All right, don't talk about it. Have a seat. Mm. Man of the hour, I presume. Timothy Leto? That would be me, your honor. You're terribly late. Let's not keep the ladies waiting. Yes, of course. <clears throat> oh, how long have you been living with uh, Timothy Leto? 
four years. During these four years, you've been living together as husband and wife? Yes, we were. Before you commenced living together, how long had you dated? For seven months. I see. When I first met Timothy Letu, he was in the middle of a separation with his then wife, Emily Kilwa. A few months later, she signed for a divorce. Oh, was it uh, after the divorce that uh, we decided to move in with him? Yes, actually we wanted to get married. But of course we had to wait for the finalization of the divorce for us to, I mean for him to be free to marry me. He advised me that the divorce wasn't seriously contested and that a decree was expected after six months. What did you do while you waited for the six months to lapse? Well, we continued living together and he proposed to me. When was this? Well, it was before we moved in together. He introduced me to his parents as his future wife and I did to mine as my future husband. Oh, really? So both your families knew about your pending nuptials? Of course they were. In fact, his family has met my fox. He has even paid part of my diary. After that, our family blessed us to live together as husband and wife as waiting for the divorce to take its course. You mentioned diary. Does that mean that you are married traditionally? Yes, we were. In your pleadings, you mentioned that uh, you were betrayed. Care to shed some light on that? I was betrayed in the most cruel manner. I discovered that he and his wife had, became, had become close. In fact, they had become more than just friends. They were having an affair. How did you discover this affair with his ex-wife? Wait a minute. Miss Kamona? Yes? Objection, maybe? Yes. Emily Kilwa is still his legal wife, so the question of an affair does not come up. If anything, she was the one who was having an affair with Timothy. The marriage was over. The objection was on semantics. Semantics? But no one has produced a decree absolute. Objection sustained. Go on. Well, how did you discover that they were seeing each other again? Well, he confessed to me that they had just left together. He came home one night, took me out to a romantic dinner. He said he has some news to share. Well, I thought it was about the finalization of his divorce, which was supposed to take place in that time. I was so excited to have dinner with him. After dinner, he confessed that he and his wife had become close friends. Well, that didn't bother me. I mean, there's no point in ending a relationship with hatred. But then he dropped the bombshell. He, he told me that they hadn't just become close friends. He said that they had slept together. How long had this sleeping together been going on? Well, for him to confess, it must have gone on for a while. Um, how do you know that? Well, it explains the late nights and the business weekends out of town. Did he confess to it? Not really, but I'm a woman, and a woman knows when her man is lying. It was so obvious that she was moving back with his wife. We had a long argument and after that he picked his things and left. So, for four years, you were living with a man who had assured you that his previous marriage was um, irretrievably broken. Yes. And that uh, his divorce was just about to be finalized. Yes. For four years, you lived together as husband and wife. Yes, and now he wants to toss me out as if these four years meant nothing. We had even bought several properties together. Actually, before this nightmare began, we were negotiating for a mortgage. Nothing, Father. Did you know that Timothy Leto was a married man when you first met him? No, he told me he was divorced. Are you sure? More or less. More or less what? He told me he was in the middle of a separation. So you still knew that he was married? Legally married? I was, but... You've answered my question. When you first wore your engagement ring, did you know that it was from a married man? He wasn't really married. He was just waiting for a formality. 
Please answer my question. I'm trying. Then you must try harder. When you accepted your engagement ring, did you know that it was from a married man? If you want to put it that way. Yes or no, please. Yes. When he took you to your parents' house and he paid your dowry, did you know that he was a married man then? He was in the process of getting... Yes or no? Was he still legally married or not? He was. So you knew that he was legally married even when you lived with him? Yes, yes, yes. I knew he was a married man, but he assured me that his first marriage is over. I mean, that is why he paid dowry for me. That is why he bought me this engagement ring. And that is why he moved in with me, because he married me, because he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me, because I was like his wife for the last four years. We lived together. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if you were his wife, would we? How dare you, Elsie? How dare you? Nothing further. Am I missing something here? No, my lord. Mama Dani. Yes? Monica is like a daughter to you, right? Oh, yes. Ni kama mtoto wangu na ni mtoto mzuri sana. Do you recognize that man? Of course. Bwana Letu is our son-in-law. He is Monica's husband. Why do you say so? Mahari imelipwa. He came home three years ago and paid the full dowry. So you and your family recognize him as a husband? Yes, kabisa. We were just waiting for children. Na wamechukua mdamrefu sana. Asante sana. When he came to ask for your niece's hand in marriage and paid the dowry, were you aware that he was a married man? Si alikuwa me apply divorce. He wanted to marry our girl as soon as the divorce was done. So you knew that he was a married man? Yes, but there's no problem with a man having two wives. If these two women are fighting over him, let him keep them both. Moja wakanisa, mungine wakitamaduni. Wacha maisha yendele. Ama, sida iko wapi? Wanaume ni wale wale wanaume. If he is not with this one, he will be with another. So, watch any headache. Accept each other and live in peace with one another. <laughs> eh? Mushirikiane. Sindio? Huh? Wanaume, ni wale wale. Any letters or files? Hmm. Let's talk about LT. Let's talk about Mr. Marco. So. Then I need you to post these letters. Hmm. So, so. So, thank you. We're going to leave. I'm okay. Why? Hmm. We're going to talk about you, Joe. When you're in Toto, change your box, Joe. Show me. Joe, I'm worried, but I can. Ambrose, you need to learn to mind your own business. But you need to talk to Bana. Team Toto. Huh? Do you know the kids of nowadays? Team Toto. Yeah, don't remember Team Toto. So I was just saying in the zango, I'm a Team Toto. At this point, we're all aware that you made it perfectly clear that you were legally married when you got into a relationship with Monica Sugara? Yes. You confessed to having sexual relations with your wife Emily after a four-year separation. That's true. And I deeply regret when all this began. I realized I could be sending the wrong signals to the two women involved. That is why I confessed to Monica. Very noble of you. During the entire time that you were together with Monica, did you enter into any joint investments? No. Why? Did you include her name as your next of kin in any of your legal documents? No. What about life insurance? 
she was not a beneficiary. Who was? Emily. Your wife, Emily Kilwa Leto. Yes. Did you include her name in your health insurance? No. If you were to drop dead right now, who would be the sole beneficiary of all your assets? I was to change all that. Answer the damn question. Mind your language and don't interrupt the court. I'm sorry. I did not think that I was going to drop dead in time soon. And so... Who would be the sole documented beneficiary of all your wealth and assets? Emily Kilualetu is the sole beneficiary to everything. Your legal wife, Emily Kilualetu? Yes. Why is it that in the four years you were together with Monica, you never included her name in anything to do with your health, your wealth, or your life? I didn't think it was important. I mean, it never occurred to me that I needed to do that before the divorce was concluded. My intention was to include her in all the papers immediately after the divorce was finalized. Because you were still married to Emily? Yes. Nothing further. Did you have the intention of marrying her once the divorce was finalized? Yes. So we can say that you promised my client Monica marriage when you cohabited. Yes. Did you pay part of the dowry? Yes. While you were living with her for the four years, did you maintain any relationship with your estranged wife, Emily Kilwa Letu? At first, no. But the last year, yes. We had to. There was a division of wealth that we were both party to. And to facilitate that, we needed to meet. And that is when you discovered that you are still in love with her. At first, my feelings were not romantic. But then we became good friends and we enjoyed each other's company. And as they say, one thing led to another. And you started to betray Monica. Nothing further. How long were you married to Timothy before the separation? The minimum required before one can apply for a divorce. Um, three years, we were married for five years. What led to that separation? My husband had an affair. Eventually he told me he was in love with her and they moved in together. That is when I applied for the divorce. So you're talking about Monica? Yes, Monica Sugara. She's the reason my husband left me. We had no problems at all until she showed up in the picture. You think she is responsible for your breakup? I don't think so. I know so. How has your relationship with Timothy been pending the divorce finalization? At first it was messy. A whole lot of mess. But with time we became good friends. We started to connect in a very deep and special way, like we used to. We'd meet at least twice a week for either lunch or dinner, for as long as we just spend time together. Does he look like he wants back into the marriage? This last few months, yes. You know the 80-20 rule? Yes. Well, he finally realized that I was at 80, and she, he's 20. 
But I'm glad he realized it before the divorce was granted. Now our marriage has a fighting chance. Are these sentiments shared by Timothy? I believe so. That explains why I'm still his sole beneficiary. Timothy confessed to Monica that he was having a sexual affair with you. Is that correct? It is not a sexual affair when he's making love to his wife. Yes, we had an intimate romantic relationship. Thank you. You claim to have had a romantic, intimate sexual affair with someone who doesn't even care. He didn't even plan for them. Whether it was planned for or not, don't we both agree to have been intimate and now working on saving our marriage? What makes you think he won't leave you again? He promised. Have you ever heard of the phrase, men never change? No. I think bad. The respondent, Timothy Leto, is a man who has parted company with the truth, and consistently so. My client is a victim of his deceitful disposition. It is evident that Mr. Leto wants to eat his cake and have it. He deliberately misled my client as to his marital status, leading her to believe that his divorce was as good as done, and all that remained was just formalities. He carried himself as if he truly believed that, and led her on what now appears to have been a wild goose chase. His actions did not betray the underlying cruelty my client was being set up for. Not only did he make a serious marriage proposal, complete with a ring, but he went ahead to lead a delegation to my client's parents and even made part payment of the diary. Both sides of the family, Monica's and Timothy's were aware of each other. They knew each other and of the existence of a relationship between the two. It was just a matter of time now, which never came to be. In light of the proposal and the diary and the representation, or should I say miss, representation of a pending marriage. My client moved in with the respondent and they lived together as husband and wife for four years. Four good years. My client contributed immensely to their upkeep and asset acquisition during this period. My Lord, it is only fair that my client's claim to 50% of the property being held by the two be upheld. It is my humble submission that the applicant must fail in her misguided quest to have this court presume a marriage between her and the respondent to form a basis for the distribution of property she alleges she owned with the respondent. Presumption of marriage is a legal concept and is not based on sympathy or such other loose considerations. It is a concept that can only be called into play when all other ingredients of a marriage have been demonstrated save for a legal formal ceremony. When we talk of a marriage contract, one very vital ingredient is capacity. Did both parties have the capacity to enter into a marriage? The answer is a resounding no. At all times, and even till this date, Timothy Letu lacked the capacity to enter into another marriage as long as his marriage to Emily existed. That remains the position until the day a court of law will grant a divorce or, and issue a decree absolute. Your Honor, the institution of marriage is protected by the law. It is protected by the government. Centuries have been spent to shape up this institution that we argue today. When the law says that a man cannot enter into another marriage until his previous marriage has been declared over by a court of law, the law means just that. It's not a technicality. It is a fact. It is the law. 
Finally, it is without debate that the marriage between Timothy and Emily was strictly monogamous. And Timothy lacked the capacity to enter into a traditional marriage, even though such marriages can be polygamous. Therefore, this case should be dismissed without much further ado. All right. Judgment next Wednesday at 10. office. Okay. Do you need me to buzz him? No, no need. I'll be waiting for him in the office. Uh, did Mr. Marco leave some assignment for me? Nope. Okay, in case anybody needs me, I'm in the library. Okay. okay. Toka? Yes? No, never mind. Okay. How are you? How did you know it was me? We lived together. Slept in the same bed for four years. This is all a mess, isn't it? Is she better than me? I wouldn't put it that way. How would you put it then? Why is life so complicated? You want to eat your cake and still have it? I know you so well, Tim. Is that what you want to say? No. I'm so sorry, Monica. So sorry. And for all it's worth, I still love you so much. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Here comes your beloved wife. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Quite fine, considering. Monica, I am so, so sorry. It's okay, you're doing your job. In the matter of Monica Sugara and Timothy Letu, this is my decision. I have considered the pleadings and the evidence adduced in this case, and I find that the plaintiff has not laid enough basis for me to invoke the doctrine of presumption of marriage. Timothy Letu was married to Emily Letu when he embarked on cohabitation with the applicant Monica Sugara. Whereas there was a pending divorce, 
The decree was not absolute as anticipated by Section 15 of the Matrimonial Causes Act. Mr. Letu, as thus, is recognized as a married man and has no capacity whatsoever to enter into any other marriage under any system of law. I, therefore, do not hesitate to dismiss this matter with costs. The applicant, if she has claims on property, can pursue that matter in another civil case subject to proof. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the decision of the court. All rise.